Welcome to Watching the Horizon. I'm Jake. So I was talking to some friends of mine, and we were discussing um, sort of potential hypothetical situations as far as where we were going to go in the event that we had to bug out. Now, as you know, if you've watched any of my other videos, I'm a big proponent of bugging in when safe to do so, but there is plenty of circumstances out there that would require you to have to leave your home. So where are you going to go? Well, you need to have a plan either way. So in our conversations, I was kind of surprised at how, well, either unoriginal or downright dangerous some of the suggestions were. And so I wanted to go over a couple of those uh, suggestions that uh, I ran into as example of places not to go if you're planning to bug out. So if you have in your area like large uh, lakes, bodies of water, uh, rivers, that kind of thing, you might instinctually think that going to one of these locations could be a good idea. I mean, you need water, right? You're not going to make it very long without it. Well, true, but so is everybody else. Everyone else also, in the event of a bad scenario, preppers and non-preppers alike, well, after a while, they're going to flock to these locations also. Just like in the wild, you've got, you know, watering holes that end up being very busy places when it comes to, uh, you know, foot traffic. And if it really is a bad situation, there's a good chance that you're not going to want to find yourself there because that's where, well, just like in the animal kingdom, your predators are going to come out. Uh, you know, you're going to have people who are going to try and take advantage, uh, you know, thieves, robbers, you know, what have you. You're going to get uh, all manner of, of flavors of different types of individuals. And really, you don't want to go where there's going to be a lot of people for a long period of time. So if everybody's going to go to, say, a lake, for example, well, you can't help it. People just, by their nature, they're messy. They don't know how to properly manage living quarters. So, for example, um, let's say you've got two, three hundred people living uh, in, around, and near, uh, you know, a large body of water, a large lake, and, well, all of a sudden, just normal, everyday living becomes a problem. Uh, people are going to use that water to fish, but they're also going to use that water to clean themselves, and they're also going to use that same water, you know, to take care of their sewage. And even if they don't, and let's say they decide they're going to take care of the sewage on land, that, that is going to end up contaminating the water because you can't keep that many people organized without jacking up the water. It's, it's going to become poisoned, probably before too long, and next thing you know, you're worrying about all sorts of really nasty, nasty diseases, and, you know, any fish that are going to be in there are going to die um, if they don't get fished out, you know, immediately by the group of people. Um, the water's going to be unusable, and now you're in the middle of a bunch of other people who are experiencing the same. I mean, you might as well be in the middle of the city. It's the same problem. You just changed your location. National Forest was another one that uh, that kept coming up. And while, yes, uh, this great nation of ours does have a lot of national forest, you know, if you're not a hunter that hunts on national forest, you may not realize just, well, how crowded it can get uh, during hunting season. Um... Maybe you are familiar with this, and, and you'll know you've got people with guns shooting anything that moves, and and that's when it's expected and legal to do so. Well, in the event of a SHTF scenario, or you know maybe a mass exodus from cities, any national forest that's near you is probably going to get flooded with people, both expert and novice alike, looking for food, and. Uh, they're going to be edgy, and they're going to be armed, and you're going to see just how crowded National Forest can really get. And, uh, you know, with visibility not being great, you're going to have some potential problems there uh, as far as 
uh, accidental accidental uh, killings. So national forest probably not the best. You're going to end up with a lot more foot traffic than what you imagine. Um, if you have a means to go deep into the forest, I mean deep, like more ten miles plus. Um, past any road so where the road ends if you have the means to go an additional 10 miles then you know you're, you're looking a lot better um, why 10 miles i'll get into that a little bit later but um so easy access national forests probably not a good spot to go military bases uh was a fun suggestion but definitely if if something bad happens and you're thinking, hey, let's go to the military base. I mean, they're here to protect the citizens of the U.S. anyway. Well, here I am. Um, not really. So the U.S. military is just going to kind of see you as a refugee. And they're definitely not set up to take on large number of people when it comes to, you know, food, sanitation, you know, water, uh, you know, that kind of thing. They might have kind of open ground available, but they do need that. And they're going to have no problem telling you to pound sand and keeping you on the other side of the fence. And you're not going to want to push these guys because if something has happened, well, they've got a job to do. So don't get in their way. And people are probably going to flock to these places thinking that it's going to be safe because... Inevitably, in every zombie movie, the last safe haven always ends up being some sort of military base, which, no, don't do it. It's it's not a good place to go. Definitely not. I think that if you go talk to any service member uh, who resides at a base that's close to you, I think they would probably wholeheartedly agree that in the event of a disaster, don't go there. Not a good plan. Now, you may be thinking uh, if you live near one of our borders that uh, if something should happen in our country you're going to cross the border maybe you're going to go north into canada maybe you're going to go south into mexico i can see the the draw i can see the logic behind that choice um may not be the best move though uh i i suppose that it's possible south might be more difficult um since there's less resources you know going south Anything large enough to affect the United States when it comes to causing people to have to bug out for any period of time is probably going to be big enough to affect our neighbors as well. And if not, then they're going to be on guard. Well, for people like you crossing the border, if, if you are able to get across, you know, quickly, like very quickly, and you have the ability to disappear deep into the wilderness and stay disappeared deep into the wilderness for long periods of time, then I would say you've got a fighting chance. But if you think that you're just going to, oh, I'm going to cross the border and I'm going to go hang out in, you know, Vancouver for a while, well, they're going to figure that out real quick and they're going to put a kibosh on that. They'll probably put armed police all along the border. Um, you really don't want to get messed up in that kind of thing because especially border patrols in other countries some sort of maybe a maybe it's a terrorist attack that occurred maybe some sort of very large natural disaster or something like that um they're going to be on guard for all of the bad activity and the bad element of people kind of coming out so reconsider going over the border unless you're truly fast and able to really make use of your survival skills and just kind of stay disappeared for long periods of time. And even then, it's technically an illegal crossing, so if you get caught, you could end up in a foreign prison, and who knows what's going to happen to you then. I think my most favorite one, actually, is um, a friend of mine, he wants to buy a boat, and he's like, yeah, man, I'm just going to get on my yacht, and I'm going to go. And... That sounds romantic. That just sounds like a vacation to me. As long as it's any time not during an SHTF scenario. I mean, pirates still exist. And you want to talk about having nowhere to go, nowhere to hide. 
I mean, it's, it's, it's a horror movie in the making. You'll be able to see danger from far off. And even if you're armed, I mean, you, you're going to, where, where are you going to go? So you're going to have to have a, a pretty substantial boat with, you know, some serious horsepower, but, you know, depending on what the situation is, maybe you're not going to have a safe harbor to go to. And if you don't and you get caught in the middle of nowhere, they can just wait you out or they can just take pot shots at you. It's just, it's just, I don't know. The idea of being trapped on a boat way out in the middle of nowhere, no help is coming for you. All you've got is your supplies. And I mean, unless you're going to be able to pull out, I don't know, a mini gun or something like that, you're you're going to be at the mercy of whoever it is, you know, decides to come pick you off. So I don't know. I love the idea, but it's just, to me, it seems the most impractical of all of them. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't own a boat. I've never owned a boat. Maybe if you do, you've got something to say about it. I mean, let me know. Seriously, I'd, I'd love to hear about, you know, your plan to bug out, you know, in a boat or a yacht or whatever. Uh, you know, say something in the comments. Seriously, I'd, I'd love to hear it. Same idea with uh, an island, uh, you know, pretty much. Now, if we're talking about, you know, really big islands, you know, it's a little bit better. But most islands um, offshore of the United States are... Well, they're habited. I mean, there's people there. So if if people live there, chances are uh, how many sustainable people live on that island? I mean, everything has to get imported. Practically everything. That's why it's so expensive to live on the island. Never mind just, you know, the cost of real estate on the island, <coughs> Hawaii. But everything has to be imported. And so you've got a lot of people on a very small landmass, you're going to run out of food like instantly as soon as those shipments stop coming, in which case you're really going to have a hard time. Uh, yeah, you know, you're surrounded by water, fishing, it could happen, but just the re the number of resources, you're, you're literally in an island in the middle of the ocean, limited resources, yes, you're going to starve to death or worse, um, Lord of the Flies. That's all I gotta say. Now you might live nearby uh, some caves or some mines, um, and you might be like, "Hey, you know, nobody really knows about these mines or caves, and you know, if anything happens, I could just retreat up into the hills and go live in a cave." Um, you're not the only one who knows about those caves and mines. I guarantee it. You might think you are, but you're not. I mean, it just it just. It's not going to happen. I mean, unless you have literally dug your own mine, which I guess there's a couple people out there that have, uh, people are going to know about it. And nothing worse than being in the back of a cave in the middle of the night and whatever animal, whether that be wild or human, stumbles upon you. And now all of a sudden, you know, you're going to have a confrontation. So um, if, if you've got something way out of the way, way back there, hard to get to, but you've got a way to get there. I mean, okay. But the problem with caves and mines is they're all documented. Everybody knows where they are. So unless it's particularly difficult to get to, um, you know, you're going to have company. And in an SHTF situation, you're probably not going to want a lot of company. Last one I got for you is... Wherever you end up bugging out to, you're going to want to stay away from the major interstates, about 10 miles. Um, I've mentioned it in a couple of other videos before, but, um, you know, it, research, in World War II, it was seen that as masses of people were exiting large populated areas, they oftentimes didn't have a chance to take anything with them. And so here you have a large group of people with no resources traveling on the existing roads going to the next large town and they're hungry and thirsty and cold and they have nowhere to go uh, immediately to get those resources. So all they do is they just trudge on. Well, what happens is um, inevitably what was observed, you know, the, the main body of people will stay at the road 
and then you know scouts will go out this isn't organized it just happens you know uh you know the man of the family for example uh his wife and kid you know crying babies he's going to leave them behind where it's safe you know at the road and he's going to go venture off into the wilderness you know to find food or water or whatever well what was observed is that they will go approximately eight to seven miles on either side of the road before they give up and come back. So any resources that they're able to find, uh, you know, in that span, they strip them. They just, I mean, whether people live there or not, um, you're not going to argue with a starving, crying baby. Uh, they will take what they want, and, and they have, and that's what they do. So if you have a bug out location and it's within, I'm just, I'm adding a safety margin here by saying 10, nice round number, easy to remember. If you're within 10 miles of any major interstate, um, probably best to kind of move out of that zone. Use some common sense here, obviously. Now, if let's say uh, you're like right at 10 miles away from a really major interstate, but it's Kansas where it's flat and straight, you can practically see that far. Okay, not really, but um, there's no terrain between here and there. Uh, that number might actually be a little bit bigger for you than it would be for somebody else uh, who like lives in the mountains where, you know, if you're 10 miles away, but there's like a mountain range between, you know, you and the, in the interstate, you know, that's, that's a different story. So anyway, just wanted to throw that out there. Um, generally, we're talking about 10 miles within the interstate. So that's what I have for you. Um, do you agree with the list? Am I full of it? I don't know. Um, that's just my opinion. It's just the research that I've done, that I've looked into. Um, but I welcome your thoughts. Anyway, so let me know what you think, and uh, I appreciate you watching. Be sure to keep your eyes open.